welcome back to the channel. Once again, we have our brand spanking new guitar in that we're going to do a full review of. The guitar we have in this week is Harley Benton's latest attempt to completely undercut the competition and offer specs that are completely unprecedented at this same price point. So, this is the Harley Benton Fusion 3, finished in satin black with a contrasting roasted maple neck and fingerboard. For those who are unaware, Harley Benton is the in-house brand of Toman, the gigantic music distributor, instrument retailer, just absolute behemoth of the industry. I believe they are the biggest music instrument retailer in the world. Harley Benton is their in-house brand that produces all sorts of things from rack-based power amp stuff to full-blown guitars, amplifiers, cabinets, everything under the sun. Now, those of you who follow the channel regularly will know that in the past, I've not been overly keen on Harley Benton's guitars. They have always offered outstanding value for money on paper. The specs have always been simply unbeatable, have always consistently undercut the competition at the same price point. However, I have always felt that these instruments are thrown together without much care there isn't a whole lot of attention to detail or QC, and I felt they've kind of been lacking in passion and soul a little bit in previous reviews I've done. So let's find out if this brand new for 2022 model can change my mind. As is virtually always the case with a Harley Benton guitar, the specs are simply unbeatable at this price point. For £379 new, you are getting a proper set of active EMG Hot 70 pickups. You are getting nice quality locking machine heads. You are getting a roasted maple neck and fingerboard. You're getting a proper graph tech nut and you're getting stainless steel frets, which is a set of specs that would be absolutely appropriate for a guitar costing two or three times the price that this one actually does. So on paper, this thing is unbeatable. However, specs are only ever half the story. The rest of the story comes when you actually try the product. <laughs> So before I explain to you some of the pluses and minuses of the specifications of this guitar, let's take a look at build quality, which in my opinion has always been the weakest point of anything Harley Benton have offered. Now I sourced this guitar completely as a usual paying customer with my own money, bought it off the Toman website. So this hasn't been sent to me for review, nothing like that, okay? I'm very pleased to report that aside from a slightly rough finish around where the nut is set, there really isn't any faults I can find with the build of this guitar, which is such an improvement from anything I've played from Harley Benton before, which has always come to me with just a catalogue of QC problems, uh, noisy pickups, sharp frets, just like massive build quality flaws. This thing is like spot on for 379 of your English pounds, you aren't gonna get better built than this. So I am really impressed with the build quality on this thing. The only issue, as I said, is the nut. Now, it's slightly rough in its finish. There's a bit of a gap. You can see tooling marks at either end of it. I also have to say that as this is a proper Graftec Tusk nut, I have never seen one this thin before. So if you compare it side by side with one of my other guitars, here we have a Legata N6X that also has a Tusk nut. The overall width of it on this guitar is literally half what I've normally seen on guitars with this nut. 
Now I think this could present an issue for you guys who like to use ultra heavy gauge strings and for you guys who like to file down the nut so the string sits in it a little bit better. Due to the thinness of the nut, you're really not gonna have much leeway and much meat to play with when it comes to filing this thing down. So I would probably recommend you don't do that with this guitar. The switch gear on this guitar was a pleasant surprise also. Now it has a three-way blade switch, my favorite type of switch, so I've had many, many of these in my hands over the years. This one feels like a proper premium item. Usually on an affordable guitar, the blade switch feels really hollow and loose and wiggly, but this thing is tight, it's nicely damped, it's very positive in its action. There are no issues at all with the pots, which almost every single Harley Benton guitar I have played in the past has arrived with some type of issue with the pots, whether they're rubbing against the body or they're not mounted properly or they're crackling or something like that. There is a couple of really nice premium additions to the spec of this guitar that you would usually only see in something costing maybe seven, 800 quid and above. Number one, you have glow in the dark side dots on the edge of the fretboard. These are not genuine Lumen Lays, which is the original company who kind of invented this. These are Harley Benton's sort of third party version of them. However, I have to say, they function almost as well as the genuine Lumen Lay item. And I have not been able to say that before about third party glow in the dark side dots. Typically, I find that they do not glow anywhere near as bright as the genuine article, and they don't last anywhere near as long after you've charged them up. I've actually found with these that these are almost as good. They're really bright. Once you've charged them up with a UV torch, they stay bright for about as long as anything I've seen from a genuine Lumen Lace side dot. That is a massive plus for this guitar. It's not something that you need, but it's a really cool, nice premium feature that I'm sure buyers of this instrument will appreciate. premium appointment that I want to talk about is the addition of blacksmith stainless steel frets. Now, I actually think this guitar would have probably been better off without stainless steel frets. Now hear me out on this because this may be a controversial opinion. I believe that stainless steel frets are in 9 out of 10 cases completely unnecessary for most players. They have become quite an in-fashion feature on guitars, and they are something that buyers now sort of demand over a certain price point. Now, stainless steel frets, really the only thing they offer over standard nickel frets is enhanced durability. These frets will simply last longer than nickel frets. Now, do you ever remember a time where you've had to refret one of your guitars because the frets had worn down? I mean, seriously, like, I have never ever had to do that to one of my guitars and I have owned instruments for years and years and years. You're really talking about a vintage 30, 40 year old guitar before you're going to be talking about refretting. Now I get that some of you think, okay, I may not ever need stainless steel frets, but it's nice to know they're there. Whilst I can see that argument, the problem I have with stainless steel frets is when you buy a brand new guitar with them, there is a really long break-in period where the frets feel just super rough and noisy to bend over. Now, unless these things have been polished to oblivion, virtually every single guitar I've bought with stainless steel frets has for the first few months just really felt unpleasant to do bends on. And this thing is no different. This is probably the roughest set of stainless steel frets I have ever played on on a guitar straight out of the box. Just listen to the noise when you're bending at the 12th fret. It is like soloing over sandpaper when you're doing bends on this thing. And I have to think if they just thrown on a good quality set of polished nickel frets 
out of the box, this thing would just be a much more pleasant experience to solo on. Do let me know what you guys think about the whole stainless steel argument. Personally, I have always preferred the feel of cheaper nickel frets. What have you guys found in your travels and experience with guitars? I would be really keen to know. Now, impressive specs aside, I think the main USP of this guitar is that it offers you a full roasted maple neck and fingerboard for less than 400 quid, which has pretty much never been done before as far as I know. Now, why is a roasted maple neck and fingerboard something that is so in demand at the minute? By roasting the wood, you've effectively eliminated all moisture that could be left within it. And so you've eliminated virtually any potential for the wood to warp. Now, number one, this lends itself to having excellent tuning stability. And I must say, this thing stays in tune fantastically well, much better than quite a few guitars I've tried at this price point. The other thing I've found that a roasted maple neck gives you is a really distinctive, snappy, bright tone. Now, those of you who prefer a bolt-on neck because you get a slightly snappier tone, this is kind of like that effect times 10. And I have to say, a version of that is what I'm getting from this guitar, which at 379 quid is just amazing. Now, ergonomically speaking, Harley Benton market this as a thin C-shaped neck. I actually think it feels closer to a Fender neck than what I at least have experienced as a thin C. I just get a real kind of Fender-y stratocast -y vibe from the profile of this neck. Now, weight and balance wise, this thing is really comfortable, super light. The neck join and the belly carve on the reverse of the guitar are welcome additions, and this thing really is just super comfortable to play. If you are after like an affordable guitar, just to kind of hang around the stage or kind of keep around the house or just something that maybe you can leave at a rehearsal studio and not really worry about it, I think this is just a perfect sort of daily driver guitar, you know? Like, if you have your special ultra expensive ones that you maybe would prefer not to rehearse with or gig with too much, getting one of these in will absolutely not break the bank, and you will be really surprised how well this thing functions for what it costs. Now the EMG Retroactive 70 pickups are designed to be more of like a 70s, 80s kind of high gain, hot roddy type sound. So they are an active pickup with a preamp and a battery, but they are voiced to be more dynamic in the way that a passive pickup would be. These sound fantastic. They are really high output, but not like insane sort of compressed metal territory like an EMG 81 would be. They have a really nice high-end roll-off when you're playing clean tones. And when you are playing high-gain stuff, there is, to me, like just the exact right amount of output. So somebody who wants to play rock and blues could still feasibly use these and they would sound the part. sounds I've been getting out of this guitar, be it ultra super clean with a touch of reverb, with some chorus on, with stupid amounts of gain, delay, reverb for leady stuff, I've really just been happy with everything across the spectrum. I think these pickups are really versatile. So in summary, consider my mind changed about Harley Benton guitars. This is the first truly great instrument I have played with the Harley Benton badge on. 
I tried the Amarok in a very similar specification and it just was not built well. It did not play nicely. This thing, however, is a proper contender. It's that rare example of it isn't too good to be true. It is as good as it seems. I would be really keen to hear from anybody else who has purchased one of these Fusion 3 guitars just to make sure that I'm not suddenly one of these lucky people who's got a really good one and actually for the most part they are going out in a poor state like a lot of Harley Bentons have been that I've played. Thank you so much for watching this video and tuning in. If you found this video entertaining or useful, please think about chucking me a subscribe. It really does encourage me and help me to keep producing content for you. Better yet, you can also support the channel via the buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon.